Now we come to the section called Comedy Minus One. Please open the album up so you have your script in front of you. People listening to this on 8-track tape or cassette, if you try and open the album up, you're going to rip that little picture right off. You should have gotten a script with your purchase. If you didn't, you can contact the company that manufactures the tape, and they will send you one. I'm sorry if there's any inconvenience involved, but I really have nothing to do with this and will take no responsibility for it. Now, what is this all about? Well, in just a few moments, you and I are going to team up and play one of the great rooms in this country. The audience is already there, and they're ready. We will be performing the classic routine, the auto mechanic. If you look at your script, you will see the part of you. This, of course, is you, male or female. You will also see the letter L in parenthesis and occasionally the letter A. This denotes laughter and applause. Sometimes you will get more than one laugh during something you're saying, and sometimes I might get a laugh right before your next line. You will have to practice until you can feel just how much of the laugh to let die down before you continue. This is called timing. Say it with me, timing. And this is very important. The routine is time for maximum laughs and will move at a brisk pace. If you find you're finishing too late, speed up. Get into the swing of things. If you're finishing early, slow down. You're going too fast. But I repeat, the only way you're going to get it right is to practice. And there's an extra surprise. Toward the end of the routine, a special guest comedian will be coming on stage and you will be able to have dialogue with him. Mr. Brooks? Yes. Showtime, sir. Thank you. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm beginning to get nervous. Good luck. Break a leg. The next time I speak to you, we'll be on stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Royal Hotel's Majestic Room is proud to present the comedy team of Albert and you. Thank you, thank you. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Albert. Wait a minute. How could you be me? No, you didn't. I said I was Albert, and you said you were me. Now I'm confused. I think we should get on with this. Well, if it's all right with you, I thought we would visit the auto mechanic. <laughs> Thank you, very much. Bernie, a little visiting music, please. Uh, excuse me, I need some work done on my car. 8.50? What's that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Okay, I get the point. You don't come cheap. Now, can you repair this car or not? There's a knocking in my engine. <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere with you. Can you please fix my engine? Wonderful. All right. There. There. It's open. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Are you trying to say this is going to cost a lot of money? Yes. So? Is, 
This car has only 17,000 miles on it. Nothing could be that serious. Because I don't know anything about cars. No. Okay, that's it. I'll go elsewhere. If I wanted someone to pull my leg, I would have gone to a chiropractor. I have to get one laugh, don't I? <laughs> well, that sounds honest. of the hoist. I don't believe it. You mean it actually costs money just to raise this car up? <laughs> this is highway robbery. <laughs> Look, I don't have to stand for this. Here is $10. Bring my car down. I'm through with you. Ruins? What are you talking about? My God. That's unbelievable. Now stop with these jokes! <laughs> please. Just fix my car, please. What is it? <laughs> Just a minute. That's impossible. I know enough to know that the pistons and the muffler don't even come near each other. <laughs> no. <laughs> you must think I'm a fool. Well, let me tell you a thing or two. It so happens that I Excuse don't have me. to stand here and... Excuse me, uh, are you the auto mechanic? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Georgie Jessup. Well, where's that applause coming from? I thought we were in a garage. <laughs> Listen, I need some work done on my car. 8.50? Oh, my God, I didn't realize it was so late. I gotta be somewhere at 9.30. Well, I'll see you later. No, 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 Georgie. The mechanic wasn't giving you the time. That's a price. A price for what? <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's $9. <laughs> Now, look, I don't need this car restored. I just need some repair work. This car belonged to the great Al Jolson. Well, every time I stop at a light, it gets down on one tire. <laughs> of course, I'm just kidding. But actually, I don't know what's wrong with it. That's why I came here. Who are you talking to? Oh, I don't know if it makes funny noises. I mean, these days, who can tell what's funny anyway? <laughs> Enough of this talk. Now, I'll make you a deal. You fix my car. Charge me almost nothing. And the next time that you're very, very sick, you call me and we'll talk about a eulogy for you. I don't think you'd want this person to work on your car, Georgie. The prices are outrageous and the service stinks. I have no doubt. Well, then I don't need this, then. I'm very big in many parts of the world. And anyway, I can go to Earl Shive, and for $29, he'll paint over the whole problem. 
Thanks very much, and I'll see you later. Mr. George Jessel, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. George Jessel. He was right in getting out of here, and I'm following his example. Now, here's your $9 for your valuable time. Here's your $10 lowering fee. Put my car down. I'm finished with all this. Yes, put it down. You never stop, do you? Well, in that case, good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Beautiful audience, thank you.